Philippians 4. I want to talk to you about a subject that God been talking to me about all week. And I allowed the youth to stay in here tonight because this will pertain them too. It pertains everyone who's a Christian. And if I would entitle this tonight, I would entitle it this, Don't Say If I Can. Sometimes in life, we set out to do something for God, something that God puts on our heart, a calling in our life, something that God ordained us to do before we were formed in our mother's womb. We get excited about that calling. We get excited about what God's doing in our life. We get excited about what God's doing in the church. We get excited about what God's doing around the world. And then here comes a voice. How many of you know what voice I'm talking about? Not the voice of the Lord. It's another voice. And he says, you can't do that. You can't do that. I want to tell you tonight, don't say if I can. Say I can. Because you know why I can? Because God said I can. When the devil whispers in your ear, you can't do that, say, I can, because God said I can. Church, I want to tell you, it's just that simple. The gospel is a, it's a simple gospel. Simply believe. Stand on God's word. Trust in his word. Believe what he says to you. Stand believe the lies of the enemy, and God's word will not return unto him void. Amen? How many of you think that, that, that King David, when he was just a, a, a little youth, that when the lion came, the devil was telling him, run for your life. Amen? So no, he rose up against that lion. He killed it with his bare hands. Another incident came when, while he was out there guarding the sheep. Here comes a bear. How many of you believe the devil said, you can't kill a bear with your, own, with your bare hands? How many of you believe the devil said that? Amen? Did he not? He did. I promise you he did. Multiple times, that still small voice says, run for your life. Amen? You will die doing this. said, no, what was he standing on, on the word of the Lord? He said, I've already killed a lion. Surely I can kill a bear. And the Lord used those two incidents in David's life when he faced the biggest giant of all, which was Goliath. Everybody told him and gave him a report, little kid, go home. You're going to die. He said, no, I've already killed a bear and I've already killed a lion. I believe he was talking to Satan. And he said, this overgrown Philistine is going to die too. And I'm going to use his sword to cut off his head. And that's exactly what happened. But King David stood on the word of the Lord before he was even king. He stood on God's anointing. He stood on God's word. He stood on God's power. He knew who he was in God. And there was nobody in this world. Listen to me, church. You have a, you have a word from God. You have in all of our lives. God has a plan for your life. Amen. How many of you believe that? You have a plan for your life. The world has a plan for your life. Which plan are we going to go for? We have to go for God's plan. Amen? We have to, to allow ourselves to choose God's plan over the world's plan. The world gives us a report. God gives us a report. God says we're the head, not the tail. Amen? We're above and not beneath. I don't care what the stock market says. I don't care what the housing market does. I don't care what inflation does. My God is bigger than all those things. He's bigger than a doctor report. He's bigger than anything. But we have to know that and stand on it. Tonight I want to give you a boost of faith. I want you to recall things in your life that God may have spoken to you years ago, a week ago, an hour ago. Just because God spoke something to you years ago doesn't mean that God aborted His promise to you. Abraham was given a promise. Did it not take years and years for that promise to be birthed? Was God work? Did God change His mind? No. Even in the process of all of it, Abraham tried to go about it his own way and produce Ishmael something worldly. And that's all our plan does. Don't compromise don't say, if I can, say, I can, say, I will. The word if is this, used to say that a particular thing can or will happen when, only when, or often something else, or after something else happens bec or becomes true. I don't have to use that word in my, that, that little word is the mo one of the most powerful words of the devil. If you could, why didn't you? If, you? if that was the case, why is it like this? And the devil takes Scripture and turns it around and uses it against us just like he did Adam and Eve. If God were God, 
If the, then why would not God want you to eat this fruit? Because He knows it's going to make you like Him. The devil's going to use Scripture against you the same way he did against Jesus. And multiple thousands and millions of people who have believed into the lie of the enemy to say that they could not do what God created them to do. My God does not is not a man that he should ever make a mistake. He will never lie to you. He will never call you or me to do something that we cannot do. But he will always call you to do something that you don't understand. And that way when it does happen, you give all the, pra the praise, all the honor, all the glory to the one who is able to be a miracle worker, a promise keeper in your life and my life. So many times in life I look back now and see how the devil just spoke things into my life and he wanted it to come into existence. The same way that God spoke the world into existence, he spoke us to in existence. He spoke everything into existence. The devil tries to do the same thing. Even if there's nothing there, he's going to try to speak it to you to try to create something. I always tell people this. If your life is on tune with God, he's going to try to tell you that it's not on tune with God. If there's nothing wrong in your life and you're doing everything to the best of your ability to walk in the righteousness of God, he's going to point, he's going to lie to you and tell you there is something wrong. I've counseled so many Christians Brother Shane, I'm, I'm trying to get everything around. I said, what you worried about? Well, I just don't know. Something don't feel right. Amen? Well, that's the devil. The devil going to try to throw all those fiery darts in our life. You know why? Because if I'm thinking about what's not feeling right, I'm not thinking about what God's doing in my life. So in life, we're going to get to the place to where we have to say, you know what? I have nothing in the natural that tells me I'm going to make it. I have no good report. From the doc, I have no good report when I look at my checkbook. I have no good report when I, when I go by my feelings. Or I just have to believe God's Word. Now, in the natural, I love when God uses natural things to, to uh, show us what His Word really means. To compare the two together. We, how many of you have to push yourself to do certain things in life? You have, your body says, no, we're not doing that. And your, your, your spirit says, oh, yes, we are. I always told you this, that your spirit will override your body. But you've got to speak to your body. You've got to tell your body, no, you are getting up early. No, you will. You know, I, this is what a, people have no problem getting up and going to work. You don't like it, but you do. But when it comes to spiritual things in life, we make every excuse in the world and we want God to stop it. Hey, God, you know that I can't do that. Why you call me to do that? God, you know. Did not Moses say the same thing? Did not Jeremiah say the same thing? You know, we, we, these great men of God stood up and said, but God, you know better than that. God does know better. God knows when he puts a calling on our life that he is going to fill us with the ability to perform that calling. There's so many times in my life, it doesn't matter how many times I do something. The next time I do it, my body says, you're not going to make it. Oh, yeah, you're going to make it. I've, I've, I'm just giving you a worldly example, but for a couple years now, I, I've been at 49 years old. Not really. 49 years old, I, I bought a treadmill, and I get on it, and I run and I run a lot. And every time I get on it, by halfway through, the devil says, why don't you just, you don't have to run that far. You don't, you don't have, you're not going to, and my body tells me, like, you're not going to make it. I say, oh, yes, I will. You know what my, my mind, I have to tell my mind every time, just keep going, and you'll get there. Just keep going. When my body tells me you're not going to make it, my mind says, just keep running. Just keep going. I tell my wife and my daughter, I said, if, if you hear something loud, I'm not getting off until I'm supposed to. It's either I passed out or something. The other day I dropped my water bottle, Amber came running in. Dad, you all right? So yeah, I just dropped my water bottle. They're waiting for me to pass out. But if you tell yourself, I'm going to do it, my body would want to quit early every time. And if I let it, you know what it's going to tell me the next time? You don't have to go that far. You don't have to go that far. You don't have to go that. And this is what's going to happen. We'll keep lowering the standards. And this is what the devil does. When we get low enough, he's going to tell us, you see, you, you couldn't do it. You're nobody. You know, I knew you couldn't do it. And this is what we have to do in the world. When God puts something in front of us spiritually, 
We have to be able to say, you know what? I can do it, and I will do it. It's going to cost us something, amen? The Apostle Paul, the, listen, look, in this, in this chapter right here, Acts chapter number, number 9, listen what he says. I'm, in the, I'm, I'm even in the wrong book. I'm, just, I'm here, but he says, listen what the Holy Spirit said. He said, for I will show him how many things he must suffer for my name's sake, amen? We're going to suffer for, for the, the sake of That's Acts chapter number 9, 16. I'll just throw that in there for you. We're going to suffer, amen? Amen. How many of you know, if you're going to accomplish something in the natural, you're going to suffer. See? You turn on the TV and see all these infomercials and all these pills and all these things and, and this little step thing they, they, they put. You, you sit down at your desk chair and you pedal a little thing and then they've got abs now. I'm like, for real? No. It's like you suffer for that, right? Right? You do. And listen, spiritually, we think that, that we're going to just you know, spiritually speak, just going to eat ice cream and we're going to have all the, the wonderful, you know, revelations of God and we're going to, we're going to be a hundredfold and we're going to, you know, we can all, we can be a hundredfold, amen? But we're going to suffer to get there. You're going to die to self and, and that's what we have to spiritually do. This afternoon, this is what the Holy Spirit is trying to do. He's trying to revive some, some callings in this church. He's trying to revive some ministries in our life. And, and it's just between you and God. And, and this is what the Holy Spirit is telling me, that he's tired of the devil telling you you can't. Or if circumstances were different, and, you know, I wouldn't be in this condition. No, uh, tonight we're going to take some I can'ts and we're going to turn them into some I wills and, and I can. And some confidence in our life. Amen. Is that what we need as Christians? Some confidence to speak back to the devil? And, you know, not with your own words, but find a scripture in the Bible, you see, that says you can. And, and there's one, I promise you, there's always one in here to fit your circumstance. And find it and stand on it. And when the devil whispers in your ear, you know, you're, you're, you're not going to make it. Oh, I beg to differ with you, Mr. Devil. The Bible, my God told me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. His word says that I am healed by Jesus' stripes. Amen. His word tells me that, that His people shall not beg for bread. Amen? God's going to take care of me because His word says it will, and it will never return unto Him void. Let's read some, some scriptures in Acts chapter number 4. I mean, uh, let's, go to, let's do, go to Philippians, right book. Philippians chapter number 4. Starting with verse number 8. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren... Amen. I hope we can say that tonight. I hope we can leave this building and say, finally, I got my fire back. Finally, I got the promise back where it needs to be. Amen. Finally, Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true. What is true? God's word is true. Amen. God didn't make a mistake. You see, when you hear that still small voice and the, and the Holy Spirit plants something deep within your spirit and you get all excited about it, and then two weeks later, you're, 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 having, you're repenting to other people and say, you know what, I just, it was just me. You know, I, just, I, I thought that's what God wanted. No, 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 no. If you're a Christian and you're walking in the Spirit, you heard plain and well what God wants you to do. It's the devil talking you out of what God wants you to do. Amen? Now listen, when I hear things in my spirit, the first thing I do is I'm going to my knees. I'm praying, God, God if this is you, you're going to show me how, where, when, just like Mo, see, Moses said, Lord, I'll go, but you're going to go with me. If you don't go, I don't go. Amen. I'm not asking to do anything for God. I'm just asking to God to do what he wants in me. Amen. I don't want anything extra to do for God. I just want to do what God wants me to do. That's all. And he says, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, meaning having high qualities, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report. We're going to talk a little bit about good report tonight. Amen? How many of you remember the 12 spies that were sent out into the land of Canaan? Remember that story? And they all went, and God said, go check out the land that I'm giving to you. Amen? A land flowing with milk and honey. Amen? So I'm giving it to you. I want you to go and see your blessings because once you do, you're going to be excited to go there. Amen? And 10 of them come back and they said, we can't do that. There's giants over there. You know what that did? That cancer, that insecurity spread in all the camp. And Joshua and Caleb said, oh, no, we, no, we 
can. We can. They, they were only two to say, we can. You know why they, they said we could? Because God said we can. Amen? They didn't have anything else. They didn't have an army backing them up. They didn't have, you know what they were standing on? God said. I can and we can because God said. Amen? Not because our tanks are bigger than theirs or our swords are longer than theirs. Not because we're bigger than them. We're much smaller than them. But God said. And when God said, it's done. Amen? Start, start receiving your blessing and your promise right then and there. Start claiming it. Amen? Man, that's, look, how many of you know heaven's your home? Heaven's my home, man. I'm telling you, we was, last week I was, I was in the Spirit. Man, God showed me. God showed. I was thinking, you know, when people pass away, which man, you know, they're they're in a better place. Man, they're in, they're not just in a better place. I'm telling you, they're they're in the place. Amen. They're in the place. And man, I was thinking about my dad, and I was thinking about, you know, when when he when he got sick. I went with him to the doctor. My mom was there. And I said, Dad, it's going. We, we're waiting for the results. Mom and I already knew what the results were, but he did. And we sitting there, and he 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 said, "Man, I said, Dad, that's going to be okay." And he said, "If it's not cancer, it'll be okay." Well, I can tell you right now, it was cancer, and it's more than okay. Amen. <laughs> He's in such a better place than we are. I'm telling you that it's more than okay. I'm telling you, church, God is more than enough. He's more than he's bigger than a doctor report. <laughs> he's bigger than a, than the enemy. He's bigger than those voices that come to you. And and this is what it says that b- believe things that are a good report. Amen. Now listen, if I'm walking in the spirit and I'm I'm loving God with all my heart and I'm called according to his will or his plan, then I am a guaranteed a promise from God that all things are going to work together for my good. Stand on that report, church. Stand on that report. Listen, we're not exempt from sickness. We're not exempt from, from uh, you know, the economy collapsing and, and we lose things the same way the world does. But listen, let me tell you this, church, that we serve a God who loves us. We serve a God who's never going to abandon us. And this is what I was praying about before I came here tonight. If we just prayed every time and we never got sick or we never had a financial problem or we never had a marital problem, or we, we would not have any testimonies, amen? God allows these things to happen in our life for the purpose of giving the world a testimony to say, hey, you know what, I had that before. But my God's bigger than that, amen? God delivered me from, from that drug. God delivered me from that bully. God delivered me from all these people because I did not fight with the flesh. I fought in the spirit. Amen. I got on my knees and fought that battle on my knees and God delivered me. Amen. Do we serve the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore? Don't be double-minded, church. Be spiritually minded. Stand on God's word. He's counting on you. Amen. Amen. How many of you know God's counting on His body? Counting on the church. When we don't believe His Word, people suffer. Amen? People suffer because we don't believe we can when God says you can. Listen, we need to let heaven encourage us. Amen? Don't look to the world for your encouragement. Get get in your prayer closet. Put on some praise and worship music. Start seeking God. Start getting a revelation. Start getting God's presence. And I'm telling you, there's not a demonic spirit in hell that will stand against you and against God's plan and purpose for your life. The problem with God's people is this. He always wanted a people who He could trust. Amen? Did God want anything else from us as His children? To love Him and trust Him at His Word. God's heart breaks when He speaks things to us. How many of you know God gets excited when He puts a gift into us? When He calls, He's excited about that. Say, I want to, this servant's going to go, this servant's going to conquer the, 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 the world around them. Great and mighty things, He says, I'm going to do through my servant. And when we let Him down because of a lack of trust or faith, God has to be disappointed. The Bible says that we cannot please God without what? 
faith. Amen? We have to believe, church. Believe His good report. He says, if Paul says, if there is any thing... If, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, listen, meditate on these things. Stop meditating on the negative things. Meditate on God's Word. I can do it. I will do it. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, is that, man, look, when I was studying this this morning, you know, people, people hold back testimonies in their life because they don't want people to think that they're boasting about something. Amen? The Apostle Paul said this. He said, if I boast, or if I have, he said, it's not of myself. He said, it's to the glory of God. Amen? Listen to what the Apostle Paul said. He said, listen, the things that you learned and received and heard and saw in me. Now listen, he wrote two-thirds of this New Testament. Paul knew what he was talking about. Amen? Amen? Paul didn't just say, hey, you know what? I, you know, I heard this and you know what? I believe it, so you believe it. Paul said, you know what? I demonstrated my faith in Christ. Amen. How many of you can see through this book, through Paul's writing, that he demonstrated his faith in Christ? He didn't say, you know what? Peter told me about this and you know what? I'm, I, you know, I kind of want to believe it, but it's hard to believe. Amen. Isn't God's word sometimes hard to believe? Say, God, you would do that for me. God, you would ask me to, to go to this place? You would send me, God? Yeah. You know why? Because God, God trusts in His children. Amen? God believes in you. Amen? How many of you know God believes in His people? He does. And He expects us to believe in Him. And Paul's telling the Philippians here, he said, listen, he said, these things that you learned and heard and received and saw in me, listen to what he said. Try to do these things. That's not what he said, is it? No. He said, look, I know that... He didn't say, look, I know that you're not as great as me, but if you can, try to accomplish at least half of what I'm accomplishing. Amen? No. Paul believed in these people too. You know why? Because they had the Holy Spirit. Amen? And listen what Acts 1 8 says. And you shall receive what? Power. Amen? To do what? Be witnesses. Witnesses of God's power. Witnesses. Witnesses of His power. And Paul said, these things do, the things that you saw and heard in me. And listen to this, and then the God of peace will be with you. <laughs> obedience brings peace. Disobedience obviously brings discouragement, amen? We all get there, see? And you wonder, how did I get here? Rewind and see where you gave heed to that Deceiving spirit. See, he doesn't come at you with a, with a whole big old lie. He comes to you and he, he just twists a little bit of God's word. And he says, you know what? God don't really expect that of you. You know what? You can sit on the sidelines. God loves you anyway. And listen, church, he does. There ain't nothing you can do or not do to make God not love you. But I want more. I want to be pleasing to God. Amen. I want God to look down upon me and you, and say, this is my beloved child in whom I am well, what? Please. Amen? You know, the only way that we're going to please God is through obedience to His Word. It's not enough, church, just to become a Christian. When you become a Christian, you enlist in God's spiritual army. Now God expects something of me and you to get in the fight, to, get, to win souls for the kingdom of God. And we will not do that in our own strength or ability. Every single time I lean upon my ability, I fall flat on my face before God. And you see, that's where the devil wants you because when you're down, he's going to kick you and he's going to use people in high principalities in his army to help kick you while you're down and make you believe that you can't. Amen. I want to hear today to tell you that you can in verse 10, he says, But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need. Listen to these words. For I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. Man, is that trusting in God or what? That's trusting in the Lord. So you know what? And listen to what he says. It wasn't easy things that God, that Paul faced. Listen, he said, I know how to be a base. That word means to reduce 
or to lower in rank. See, Paul said, it doesn't matter what people call me. I just want what God wants. I just want to be called who I am, amen? I just want to call on God. I just want to know Him. I just want to be obedient to Him. And, and, and then he goes on, and he says, he says, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things, I want you to, to look at those, all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Now the question today to us is this, can we still stay the course when we're full and when we're empty, when we're feeling good and when we're suffering? See, when everybody's for us and, and then half of the people's against us, can we still stay the course with God? See, how many of you know people hated Paul? Not everybody loved Paul. More people hated him and they proved it. They killed him. They cut off his head. They proved that they hated him. But Paul said, it doesn't matter to me whether you like me or not. See, I don't need to be famous in your eyes. I'm famous in my father's eyes. Amen. That's all that matters to me. And listen, church, let me tell you, until you get out of your, your mind what people think about you, you will never really do what God wants you to do. Amen. It doesn't matter what people think about you. Throughout my Christian life, people did not, my own family, some of my, my blood relatives didn't, didn't have nothing to want to do, have nothing to do with what I was doing and try to talk me out of it hook, line, and sinker. That didn't matter to me. I knew what God wanted. I knew God had called my name. Amen. I knew God had put his finger on my life and there was no man or no woman that was going to stop me from going the direction God wanted me to go. And so Paul says these things. He says, listen, a famous verse that everybody quotes, he says this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. See? Paul didn't need worldly people in his life. He didn't need the approval of of high-ranking people in his life. He didn't need a big fancy church. He didn't need, you know, everybody to love him and like him. And he didn't need everybody to support his needs and all these things. Paul counted on Jesus for those things. And listen, he says, I'm going to, I can do all things. And he proved it with his life. So we can pray God's will into existence in our life. God has a will and a purpose for your life and my life. But that doesn't just happen. Amen. Well, if God wants me to do it, then he'll do it. No, God already did it. Amen. God already called you. He put the gift in you. Listen, you remember what Paul told Timothy? What did he say? Timothy, do what with the gift? Stir it up. Amen. Who's going to stir it up? The pastor, the church, your, your spouse? No, you stir it up. Amen. It's in there. The gift is in there. But if you don't believe in the gift, you're not going to stir it up. Trust me. You're not going to try to make it. You're not going to stir it up. Paul says this. Listen, we got to believe, church. Amen. You got to take that negative attitude of if I can. And you know what? If when, when, when things get better, I will. No, it won't. You, Paul said it didn't matter what state I am. I'm preaching the gospel. Amen. I'm going where God says to go. In some of the most Hostile places they were on the face of the earth. Even his, his brothers and sisters in the Lord said, Paul, don't please. They begged him, don't go there. He said, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me trying to stop me from doing what God wants me to do? I can just about imagine. He said, hadn't I proven myself already? You know, they said, Paul, chains await you there. He said, so what? It's going to be for the glory of God. Amen. <laughs> they would stone him, drag him out of the city and leave him for dead. He would get back up in the Holy Spirit would tell him, go back into the city, I'll protect you. And he would go back into the same city and begin to preach the gospel again, amen? How many of you know Christians today that would do those kind of things? No, we don't want suffering, we don't want pain, we just want the glory, amen? But the glory comes after the cross, and there's pain to get there. And so, I want you to understand that you need to change your way you speak, Amen? You need to change the way you speak. Watch your, watch your words. You need never parents ever tell you that. You better watch your mouth. Well, we need to watch our mouth, amen? We need to watch what we say because the devil's listening too. And if he can speak something negative, I'm telling you, he's going to fuel that fire, amen? But you start getting on God's page. You start speaking to God. You start telling God, hey, you know what? God, you said. You said it, God. 
Remind God what He said. He don't need to be reminded, but it's okay for you to say, God, you said. Your Word says. God, remember when I was in my prayer closet? I can't go to Philippians 3 and 4. And, but God, remember when you, me and you was talking and you, you called me? Amen? Same way Jesus called His disciples. They were about their own business and He called them. Amen? Their lives were never the same, right? Their lives weren't the same. The Bible says they left all and followed Jesus. Amen? Whatever He said. Peter said, Lord, I will die with you. See? I will die with you. Yeah. See, I'll ne he denied him, but he died with him. Amen. He did. He gave his life for Jesus. He gave his life for you. He gave his life for me. And so here's the purpose of our life. Following Jesus. Is that simple? Amen. Jesus said, follow me. See, how do I do that? He said, my sheep do what? They hear my voice. They follow me. They do not listen or believe the voice of the stranger. Amen. Revive that calling tonight. Stir up that gift tonight. It's not dead, church. It's not. You've got to stir it up. Amen? And listen, the way you do that is you, you get in, 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 your, in, in the Spirit. Get in the Spirit. Get back there. Say, God, you know what? I, yeah, I did, God. I've been lazy. Amen? See, last night we were over here praying. I'm saying, God, you know... 2 Corinthians, Paul said this to the Corinthians. He said, examine yourself to see whether you're in the, in the faith. Amen? Examine yourself. I'm examining. God, what, where am I? Where am I? God, what am I doing wrong or what am I not doing right? See? And these were the words that God spoke to me. I just want more of your time. Can you just spend more time with me, son? See, a lot of times we, we afraid to ask God that because we're afraid God's going to throw some big thing at us and destroy. No, God's not going to do that to you. If you ask God in honesty, God's going to speak to you back in honesty. And he's going to tell you where you are and he's going to gently nudge you to get us where we need to be. Amen? He's not going to push, pull, and drag us over there. The Holy Spirit's a gentle spirit. Amen? Isn't that the Bible say he's a gentleman? Amen? He's a gentleman. God's not out to destroy us. You know, you couldn't have run so far from God like Jonah did. Did you read Jonah and God tell Jonah, hey, I told you. I told you. I knew I, knew I was going to win. No, he's a gentleman. He just takes you and spits you back up where you need to be and says, go on. Hey, go on. See? No, we don't like it. Jonah didn't like it. But he did it. Amen? He did it. And it wasn't even easy, right? No, he's out there in the scorching desert in the sun thinking he's going to die. The Lord allows a plant to come up and give them shade. Then the Lord curses the plant, kills the plant. And now Jonah's saying, what did I do now, God? <laughs> See, you know what he did? You know what God's doing? It's just trying to get him the same place that Paul was. I learned to be content in whatever state I am. See, who gives life to all things anyway? God does, amen? My Bible says this about God. He giveth and he taketh, Amen? But it's not to destroy us, it's to help us, get us to another level. And this is what we have to understand about God. That God will never deny or contradict His Word. So instead of me running to everybody else, I need to run to God's Word and find my answer. Amen? And stand on that. I can't stand and say, you know what, I love Brother Sid, I love Brother Brian, I love all of you guys. But I'm not going to you when, God's, when God brings me to the woodshed. Say, I'm going to Jesus, amen, because he knows what I really need. I could go ask Sam. I could go after I could ask all of you, hey, what do you think? And every one of you can tell me what you think. That doesn't really matter. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but it doesn't really matter what you think. What matters is what God says, amen. That's what matters. Stop going to everybody and their brother and sister and finding out what you need to be doing for God and get on your knees before God and ask God what He wants you to do. Amen? I promise you, God's going to, He's going to tell you what He wants from you. He's going to tell you. And just when you think you figured it all out, God's going to destroy it all and say, hey, this, it's kind of like God said, never mind about that. <laughs> you know, you've done this, you've done this. Never mind about that. Let somebody else do that. This, see, this is what, 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 you know, Paul said. He said, I, I don't build on no other man's foundation. He said, I put the foundations down and somebody else comes along and he builds on those foundations. be honest with you, I pretty much believe that's about where God wants Damon and I, building foundations. 
planting foundations and getting people established and helping them get rooted and grounded in God's love. But you see, we get comfortable just like everybody else does. You start doing a work for God, God points you in a direction, you start doing it, you get, you get complacent, you get happy, you get comfortable in doing those things. And then God comes along and He says, you know what, I'll, I'll hand this torch over to somebody else. Say, no, I'm going to hang on to this, you know. Uh, throughout the years, I could find verses and, and I could say, oh, God says, this will be your land and you'll never move again. And I'm like, oh, that's for me, God. I'm never, this is where I'm going to be the rest of my life. And see, but I can tell you that wasn't God. That was me. See? But when the still small voice comes and he begins to speak to you in a gentle way, don't go running. Matter of fact, the Bible says, be still and know that I'm God. Just keep still and keep praying. Amen. And God will keep speaking. He'll keep speaking as long as we keep being obedient to what we know to do. And when we do, you're going to find yourself in God's will. That's how simple it is. Just follow Him. Just listen to His voice. He makes promises to us. See, God don't just throw something at us and say, you know what, here you go, make the best of it. No, He makes promises to us. Along with the gifts and the callings of God, He interjects some things in there that keep us you know, keep us built up, keep us, keep us seeking. No different than, than, see, throughout the Bible when Abraham sent for a wife for his son, Rebecca. See, she go over there, they, they find her. See, she comes along the way back. She's hanging her head. She's, and they pull out gifts. Say, here you go. Here. And then it makes her go another mile. And then, see, she starts thinking about her past again. And they pull out some more gifts. And, hey, here you go. Here, take this. And she's smiling. God does the same thing with us. He don't leave His children starving. He don't starve us to death. He don't make us promises and then throw us out there for the wolves and say, hey, you know what, if you make it, that's good. If not, it's okay. No, along the way, God encourages us in His Spirit. And so when God makes a promise to you or God puts His finger on things in your life, understand this, that you only see to the bend in the road. God looks down from heaven and He sees the whole big picture. Have enough faith to get to that curve. And then once you turn it, you'll be able to see some more direction that God wants you to have. God never shows us the whole picture at one time. Amen. We would not need faith to do that. So when, when months ago, when God began to put in my heart, nobody else's heart, He began to put in my heart, see, God began months and months ago drawing up my brook as pastor of this church. Again, drawing it up. But there was already a, a word planted in my heart. Already a word. I didn't know the whole content. See, if God wouldn't have drew, draw, you know, dried up the brook, would Elijah have, have moved? No, he would have camped there for the rest of his life and been comfortable there. The ravens would have brought him some food. He had water to drink. It was like heaven for him. But God knows sometimes if he don't dry up the brook in our life, we're just going to stay comfortable. We're just going to stay. But you will dry up. You will become a spiritual prune if you don't follow God. So what Paul said, he said, look, I know how to be a base. I know how to reduce or lower. When God began putting these things on my heart, I said, okay, God, let me see if this makes sense to you. I'll go to pastor in a church to go and do him one thing a week, two things. I said, that don't really make sense to me, God. This is what God replied to me. It doesn't need to. My wife and I are busier now ministering the gospel to people than we were when we were full-time pastors at this church. Busier right now. But you see, this is how God does things. In the midst of the trans, trans, uh, in the midst of the transition, I'm, I'm just seeking, I get discouraged with it. Brother Wayne shows up one, one Wednesday night. Didn't ask him why he was here or anything. After Almost everybody leave me and him in the fellowship hall. I began to share a little bit of my vision with him. He gets all excited. Pastor, God put the same exact thing in my heart. He dried up the brook. I said, Amen, brother. I'm not the only one in the boat. We're going to row together. And God did those things. 
He needed encouragement. I needed encouragement. We said, Brother Shane, I thought if you had God, you had everything. Yeah, you do. But we need each other. God puts each, his, his people in our lives, amen, to help to encourage us. And see, a lot of people didn't understand. And I knew that they wouldn't. When Jamie and I left Mansura, a lot of people didn't understand. Matter of fact, people point blank told me that I was wrong and I didn't hear God. Okay. Those same people visited the church one or two times and said, Shane, you were right. I feel God's presence over there. I'm sorry. Okay. But it didn't matter to me whether they said sorry or not sorry or believe me or not believe me. I know what God wanted for my life. And this is what you need to know. Don't worry about what so-and-so thinks about what you're doing. Find God's will. Know God. Stir up God's will in your life. And you will see things happen. You know, my wife and I, we started a community Bible study in Plusherville. We left there last Thursday night. Both of us were in the high heaven. God moved. She sang one song. People were crying. I preached a simple message, very simple elementary message. They're just pulling, hungry. Can you come back next week? Can we do it again every week? Yeah, yeah. That's God's will for my life, her life right now. And there's more to it. There's much more to it than that. But you see, only God's will will satisfy you. Not being a pastor to thousands of people, not singing a good song, not do it's being in God's will. And listen, don't compare yourself to nobody else. You don't need to be nobody. God created you. He gifted you. He trusted you with certain people that he wouldn't, he didn't put me in their path. Brother Randall, at the nurse home, people would look at him, why are you at the nurse home? You look pretty, you have He's got a ministry there. You know what? I don't even worry about the people at the nursing home. You know why? Because Brother Randall's there. Now we're starting a Bible study at the nursing home. See? God opened that door. I didn't go looking for it. It came to me. I didn't go looking for the Plosherville thing. It came to me. See, I don't need to do something for God. Listen to what Paul said. He said, I pray to the Lord for an open door of ministry. Pray that, okay? Pray that. Don't pray, God, I want to be this. No. Pray to the Lord for an open door of ministry. And God's going to open some doors for you to do ministry. Amen? But it's not going to be exactly the way you want it. I have preached to you years ago about this. I always thought it was you. I said, this is what Jesus wants. He wants us to go out into the highways and byways. Well, how long y'all been going to the homeless, Sister Susan? God opened the door there. See, did you go looking for that? No. God opened the door of ministry to go minister to the people on the streets, literally the people who don't have homes. And it's a ministry. See, when God opens a door and God appoints you to do something, I have never seen Sister Susie or Brother Jason or any of her kids say, oh, man, we got to go over there Sunday. It's an excitement, ain't it, Sister? You know why? Because God chose it. See, even Dalton back there shaking his head. He loves it. You know why? Because that's what God wants. God wants them to do that. Now, my wife and I, we got with this whole transition, I want to support them. And, and Sister Susie will probably give me some evil eyes in a little while. Uh, I've been telling her for at least a year we're going to go with them. And, and now we're able to, and I want to do that. I want to. When God pulls Jamie and I in a, in a, away from here on a Sunday, it's not because we don't want to be here. It's because God wants us somewhere else, just like last Sunday, uh, confirmation after confirmation. I don't expect that of you all. I don't want you to do what, what we do. I want you to do what God wants you to do. Amen. And as a body, we're going to work together. Amen. The hand's not going to be jealous of the foot. And, and the eye's not going to be jealous of the mouth. We need to encourage one another, support one another, help each other. Amen. To believe for God's work. <laughs> Get in there. Say, you know what? Hey, I believe. God told you. You remember what God told you? Amen? I could look out here and I could see uh, so many people out here that have come to me and said, Brother Shane, 
God told me this is what he wants me to do. I said, yes, that's what God wants you to do. Amen. Now, we're not going to raise any hands here, but how many of us are doing what God wants us to do? Amen. We're not going to raise any hands here, but how many of us think that we need to stir it up? Amen. See, I'm not telling you to go get ahead of God. I'm just telling you to, to be where you need to be. Amen. Uh, unbury the promise uh, of God tonight. Loose, loose the, the, the grave clothes off of what Satan bound you and said, you know what, you're a Christian, but you're never going to do anything for God. Amen. You know, Paul was a, was a, a man in, that had a natural flesh like we have. Amen. He had a, a conscience. He had feelings. Amen. Uh, he was subject to fail just like any of us are, uh, but he didn't. You know why he didn't? Uh, it wasn't because he, he was a church planner. It was because he was a man of God who trusted in God's ability to fulfill his divine purpose in life. Amen. And listen, church, this is all God wants from us. He wants us to trust him, to be obedient to his word. And, and so there's, uh, there's nothing uh, that the Holy Spirit cannot do in us or through us, or for us. And listen to me, church, I said nothing. There's nothing impossible for God's Spirit to accomplish in your life and my life if we will simply stand on His promises. Amen. Stand on His promises. Now, I want you to turn to the last book Paul wrote, uh, 2 Timothy. And, and I want you to see the words that, that the great apostle writes to his young son Timothy in the faith. And Second Timothy chapter number 4, we're going to start with verse number 1 and, and read through verse number 7. And I'm not going to elaborate on it much. I encourage you to study these, these scriptures. Paul says, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, Paul's, Paul's very serious about what he's charging Timothy to do uh, because um, he's going to answer to God for it. Amen. Uh, Paul knew the seriousness of, of, of the, the wrath of God as well as the love of God. And so Paul's telling Timothy here, he says, hey, you know, I charge you to do this because one day you're going to stand before God. Uh, we're not going to stand before each other and, and hold each other accountable when, 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 when we breathe our last breath. Amen. Uh, we, so Paul, you know, Paul trust in, in, in the God that Timothy serves. Amen. So Paul knew that it was not impossible for Timothy to, to fulfill his ministry. And, and so he's not saying, Hey, I suggest to you, he says, I charge you. Amen. In other words, don't even think twice about it. Uh, Timothy, God has called you. He's anointed you. He's gifted you. He's purposed you. And, and He's going he's gonna to fulfill the good work that He begun in you. Amen? And, and as is, what is that? Who will judge the living and the dead <clears throat> at His appearing and His kingdom. He's going to judge them by what they did with what they heard. Amen? And, and this is why it's a serious thing, church. Not to just think lightly of what God has called you or purposed you to do in life. And this is what he sa tells him to preach the word. Amen. Exclamation mark. Timothy, preach the word of God. Amen. And, and listen, <clears throat> throughout, once again, I've told you the story time and time again when Jamie and I went to Center Point. We did not understand it. Uh, nothing against. Um, different denominations, but uh, how many of you know sometimes their, their, you know, their worship is not as, as active as, as we, we get sometimes, and, and my wife cried and cried, and said, oh, <laughs> I don't the word, I don't want, I said, I don't want to either, but I'm telling you, a man who was dying of cancer put things in me the same way the Apostle Paul put things in him, he was a spiritual father to me and he's laying on his deathbed and and I would every Sunday when I would go in there after church I'd preach and 
I'd go in there and, and he would ask me this question every Sunday, were there any decisions made today? And I'd tell him about the service. And, and when he was about to die, I went in there and he pointed his finger in my face and he said, never stop preaching God's word. His words never stop. When I get discouraged sometimes, I think about it. He was a spiritual father to me, encouraging me, don't stop. Amen. God believes in you. But you need, you know, you need brothers and sisters in your life also who believe in you. Who can help you and encourage you and not kick you whenever you make a mistake or whenever you're not perfect. But encourage you. Keep on. Some of the great men in the faith that we know Gary Wilkerson, the son of David Wilkerson. We heard him preach last Sunday. He said the first message I ever preached. I was 13 years old. He said I walked off the stage and some old lady came up to him and said, you don't preach like your father preaches. He said, oh, what an encouragement, you know. And, and that kind of puts a dagger in you. We need people, you know. He said, listen, he's been doing this for years. He's seen his father. He's seen miraculous things done for the kingdom of God. And he told his wife one day, he said, I just feel like quitting. And her words to him was this. Gary, keep swinging the bat. You're going to hit it again. Just keep swinging. Amen. Brother Sid taught me something. I always heard the saying, winners don't quit. One day he told me something. I never heard he said, and quitters don't win. Amen. Quitters don't win. We've got to stay in the fight, church. You've got to fight for what you believe. You gotta fight for God's word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Be ready. Stay prayed up. Amen. I got a call early this morning before I got out of bed. Hey, can you come pray for my mom? She's dying. Yeah, I'll be there. But I don't run over there. I go to God. I say, God, what do you what do, what I what do you want me to pray? God, what do you want me to pray? God gave me specific things. I said, but God. And I kind of acted like I didn't hear it. I said, God, what do you want me to say? What do you want me to pray? I'm going to say the same thing over again. I said, okay, God. It was kind of weird to me what God wanted me to pray. But does God know people's hearts better than we know people's hearts? We're just stewards. We're just vessels. We don't know what to pray. We don't know what to say. We don't know what to do. God never expected us to, amen? No, he didn't. He expected us to go to him. And he will tell us what to do and what to say. <clears throat> and so, Paul says, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. <clears throat> Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering and teaching, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, it always was man's problem, our own desire, our own will. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers. I wish I had time to go into some of this. And they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you, there it is again, but you, Timothy, be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Oh, we hear people preaching now that you're going to have your best life ever. Have your best life now. Ten steps to this and that and the other. Paul never said that to Timothy. He said, endure these afflictions that you're going to go through because of who you are. Amen? Does that sound fair to you? <laughs> you know, but you enlisted as a soldier of the Lord Jesus Christ. Endure these afflictions. Don't get entangled with the affairs of this world. And do the work of an evangelist. Listen to what he tells him. Fulfill your ministry. Fulfill your God-given purpose in life, Timothy. Because that's the only thing that's going to matter in the end. Is you fulfill your purpose. 
Now, once again, God has a plan for your life. You have a plan for your life. The world has a plan for your life. Everybody has a plan. But those plans have to die. And you have to surrender to God's plan. Amen. Surrender to His will. Surrender to His purpose. Listen to what Paul said in verse 6. For I'm already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. This time will come for every one of us. Did, did you see Paul here regretting the things that he did with his life? Not at all. Listen to what he said. Now, I want you to say, I want you to, I hear people saying this, oh, that pastor is boastful. That pastor, they talk about themselves. I don't ever want to talk about myself unless I'm going to give you an example of what God's doing in my life. I don't have anything to boast about in, my, in myself except in what God's doing. But listen what Paul said. He said, I have fought the good fight. Who fought it? Graceland Christian Church. We going to fight it? No. Paul said, I have fought this fight. Amen. Listen, I can pray with you. I can I can say, look, you know, I'll be I'll stand by your side in the adversities of life, but I can't get you through it. And you can't get me through it. There's gonna come a time in each one of our lives as Christians where we're gonna face the cross. And you know who's gonna be there? Just you and God. That's it. Nobody else. I know. I've been there. You've been there. You're gonna face it. And listen. Paul said, I have fought this good fight. Now listen to what he said again. Three times in one sentence. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. Who did it? Paul did it. Stop expecting everybody else to do it for you, church. Stop expecting to come in here on a Sunday morning and a Wednesday and hear a good sermon and just going to be the rest of your week is going to be fine. No, that's just a, a little bitty drop in the bucket. See? That's just a little bitty piece. You can't live off of that. You can't. And listen, if that's all you living for is to come in here and sing some good songs and hear a good message, you're going to miss the mark. That's not what Christianity is about. See? It's about loose hands. And it's about opening your life to God and say, God, here, here's my life. You take it, Lord. You lead. You guide. You direct, Lord. And in the process of all that, God's going to protect Amen? It's going to protect. Hey, it's a scary thing sometimes if we look at things in the natural. But was Jesus afraid of people? He feared one person. He said, listen, and listen, throughout the Bible, all of his disciples, they did not fear what men could do to them. They don't fear what man can do. Now listen, you hear, I want to be able to say all these things. I want to be able to tell, oh, oh my, I want to be able to say at the end of my life, <clears throat> I have fought the good fight. I have kept the faith. I have finished the race. Amen? I'm not going to be saying, hey, me and, you know, Brother Randall. We did. No, no. I, me, me. I will. I ain't sharing my reward with nobody else either. I have my own. You need. You get your own. Verse 8, he says, finally there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. Man, I believe like Paul's looking at this kind of like if you drive all day long and you get to your destination Finally here. Paul's like that. He's like, finally, I've arrived. Heaven is not a place that I dread going to. My wife and I went into a house today and prayed with a woman who's in a coma. She's going through the pains of death. Nobody, this body does not want that. Paul said this. He said, I long to be with the Lord in heaven, but I dread the pains of death. Amen? Nobody excited about how they're going to die. See? But let me tell you something. It's coming. For all of us. How many of you seen on, on TV this bridge in, in uh, where this bridge at? Baltimore. See all these people. Now, how many of you think that they're they just working on a bridge? They're, they're doing what they do around here, and I get aggravated. They go and put some car some, some in the hole, and half of it gets on people's vehicles. That's the pilot, you know. And see, they just minding their own business. And in a heartbeat, they're gone. See? In a heartbeat. See, church, be ready. Be ready. Be ready. See? Don't let there be any unfinished business in life. Amen? Now, did God know these people were going to, you know, die last night? Absolutely. See? This was their time. 
thing. But let me tell you something. If it was, then their work is done on this earth. See, regardless, it's, it's done. Now, there's either one or two things going to happen. They're going to get <laughs> rewarded in heaven for, for fulfilling God's purpose in, in their life. Or they're going to miss out on their rewards. This is what, what the Bible says. That your rewards will be burned up. Amen. You'll be saved. But your rewards will be burned up. Amen. I want, to, I want all of them. I want, to, I want all of them. And in the process of, of having them, I have, to, I have to fight the good fight. So he says, There is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but to all those who love me. His appearing. All of them. Matthew 4, 4 says this, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. I get up in the morning, I love, I go and I want to read the word. There's sometimes God says, No, I don't want to speak to you through the written word today. I want to speak to you through my word, through the voice of God. It's just as important to hear the voice of God the, the, than to hear the rhema or the written word of God. God will direct your path. He will show you things that you can't see in the written word of God. Now, when you get discouraged, you can go and you can open up Hebrews 11 and you can start seeing all these heroes of faith. But you know who was the real hero? God was. None of these men could have done anything except for God's ability to do their lives. But I want to tell you this, the encouraging thing is, here it is, God is just as much for you and me as he was for those people. God desires to work through you and me the same way that he desires to work through those people. So when God calls us and places a call on our lives, he's not mistaken, and he knows that we can do all these things. Now, you can look at Moses and the Red Sea. You can look at, at, at this and see God's miraculous hand in this. You can look at the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. And, and how many of you think that if in the natural they would have done it in a different way? Amen. How many of you think what I preached to you a few weeks ago, that God's thoughts are not our thoughts. His ways are not our ways. Man, we, Moses could have started planning and, and drawing up, a you know, calling Brother Sid, say, hey, can you get me a drawing of a bridge going across this See, and make sure that it can hold a certain amount of people. And God says, no, i got an easier way than that. Amen. So many times when God puts something in our life, the devil puts all these complications and he gives you this big package of, of you know, how hard it's going to be and how, you know, all these things. And God says, no, look, you can, you can either have this or you can have this. Trust in me. Amen. I will, I will lead you line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. And that's how we walk with God. Moses believed. He believed before it happened. The three Hebrew children believed that when but he said we're going to if you don't fire fire, our God can deliver us, amen. Trusted in God's word to them. Daniel and the lions then could have said, you know what, God, yeah, I, I'm trusting in your word that I'm not going to get thrown in there. God says, No, trust me that I'll protect you in there, amen. And and so there comes a testimony out of these things. Uh, once again, the, the 12 uh, spies sent into land. You know, listen. Which report are you going to believe? People says you, you can't do that. You see, I had people from this community tell me this. You can't build a church in, in back then. You can't build a church. You know what it did? It went in one ear and out the other. There's a church here. See, people get saved. People come and learn about God. See, don't, who, whose report are you going to believe? Amen. You're going to hear two different reports. Amen. Matter of fact, you're going to hear many reports, but there's only one that's true. And it's going to be against all human odds, all of it. But before you do anything and before you move, make sure that you know whose report you're believing. We read Jeremiah 29:11, <clears throat> For I know the plans that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans to give you a future and a hope to prosper you. Amen. How many of you believe that report from the Lord? Can you stand on it even when things are going against you? When it looks like things are dead in your life, like Abraham? <clears throat> Where's the promise, God? See? 
<clears throat> you know what? You called me off 90. That was impossible. Now 100 is surely impossible. Amen? God's going to, he's going to go against the odds, against human ability. And that way we can give God the credit. So, we got to give ourselves to something. God has called us to live by faith. And there are many people suffering in the world today because of a lack of faith in God's people, expecting Him to do what He said He would do through us will help people, encourage people, get people saved, get them redeemed, get them sanctified in, in Christ. So listen, I'm going to read you these scriptures and, and listen, if you want to go, please, um, once again, I get ridiculed for all kinds of things, but I, I'm not going to go there. Um, <clears throat> Exodus chapter number three, and I'm going to ask Jamie to come and, and, uh, and say, if, 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 if you're here tonight and you say, you know what, I, I, want, to, I, I want to trade in my I can'ts for a confident I can, then we're going to open the altars you tonight and that you come talk to God. Um, they sang a, about this this song, this song in a song tonight in Exodus 3, uh, verse 13 and 14. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me. These were the words, some of the first words God spoke to me in this transition. I'm sending you. That's all. I would hear those three words. All the time, I would hear those words. I'm sending you. <clears throat> what in the world does that mean, God? I'm sending you. I'm sending you. When I got called into ministry, a guy gave me a prophetic message with the scriptures, Luke 4, 18 and 19. And in those scriptures, it says, I'm sending you to heal the brokenhearted. I didn't even see that till months ago. I read that scripture hundreds of times. And God, all I would hear in my spirit is, I'm sending you. Sending you, I'm sending you, I'm sending you. And then everywhere I turn now, I'm seeing God, I'm sending you. And then God brings it all the way back those many years. He says, go read that letter that God wrote to you. And I just start reading. God, you don't get it wrong. You do know what you're talking about. See, God sees the big picture. When you only see a little bit, God sees it all. He says, he has sent me to you. And they said to me, and they say to me, God, what is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. You know what he's telling Moses? I'm whatever you need. I'm your strength when you're weak. I'm your hope when there's no hope. I'm your security when there's no security. I am who I am. Amen. And listen, I'm more than enough. How many of you believe God's more than enough? He's more than enough. More than enough. And he said, Thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Don't send yourself. God, let God send you. When he sends you, he's going to go with you. Amen. And you're not going to have to try to make fruit. Fruit's going to just grow. When you plant a garden, do you sit there and, 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 and pray for, for your garden? Do you force fruits to come on it? Or do you plant it and walk away and go back and water it and let God give the increase? You see, if we're walking with God and we're in His will, stop trying to make fruit grow. Stop trying to do things and be... Just let God. And I promise you, it will never seem to stop amazing you how mighty and powerful and miraculous and abundant God is. He is God. He is the great I am. He's the miracle worker, the promise keeper. He's everything you need. Amen? I am. He's everything. Everything. And I tell you, there's so much more that God wants to, to give to us, but He can't until we empty our cup or we're faithful with what he's called us to do when nobody else understands it. Listen, I'm your elder. I'm, I, I don't understand. I look at people sometimes and say, God, just why? God, why? I don't understand everything, but I trust. And I still get weak in my trust sometimes. And that's why 
when when I'm going through something in my life and I'm saying, God, I I, I need I do I need I need help. Amen. And then and then Brother Wayne walks in on a Wednesday. See? And listen, I'm not lifting up. God, he's, he was obedient. I'm trying to be obedient. He's trying to be obedient. We're all trying to be obedient. But how many of us need Barnabas in our life? Amen. To encourage us and to say, hey, you know what? There's still times that I, I have to call my elder and say, Brother David, I need help. And look, I get off the phone and I'm smiling again. Yeah. You know why? Because he's an encourager to me. He helps me. He encourages me. You know why? Because he's been there. Amen. And that's why I want to call on somebody who's been there and who made it through. Amen. And there's times in life that we're going to make it through this together. Amen. We need each other to help and strengthen and support each other as Christians. So tonight I'm just being obedient to the Spirit. They said, Brother Shane, that's not the Spirit, it's late. I don't care what you say. If you want to turn your if I cans to a confident God strengthen me internally, spiritually, so that I can boldly say tonight before I leave here, I can and I will. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Maybe you need to come up here tonight and do some digging. Maybe you buried that talent. Maybe you buried that calling. Maybe you buried that, com- that, that promise. You know, it's amazing how I look out in the yard in the wintertime and it's rainy and cold and I see a squirrel out there and he's digging under the pecan tree. You know what he did ahead of time? He planted something there. He knew he was going to need it again. And when he needed it, he knew where it was and he went back and dug it up. And there was food for him. And it's amazing how sometimes, even us, we bury God's promises. Well, God, when I'm not so busy, when all the kids leave, you know, when I get a better job, God, if I feel better, I promise I will. And all these things, God, no, hey, do all of those things, are, no, God, I will. Regardless of how I feel, what it looks like, who's going with me, God, I'm turning my if I can tonight into I will. Listen, I'm going to be up here with you because I have some I have some things in my life. Amen? Don't ever think that you're never going to have these things. You will because it keeps us dependent upon God. Amen? Listen, remember this tonight. If you're not fulfilling your God-given purpose, somebody is suffering. Somebody is suffering. And we're going to be held accountable for these things. Don't go with the flow. Don't take the least resistant path. That's not where God is. Take the path that you people take. That's where you'll find Jesus. So tonight, if this, if this, if this message was for you, we're going to turn all social media off. And if you want to come tonight, the Holy Spirit will meet you up here. Come and talk to Him.